From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. I'm Lawan Jirasuladit, and this is Unlock the Science. What is happiness? Happiness can be seen and measured from different perspectives. But let's start looking at it from a global view. The World Happiness Report. The World Happiness Report is an annual global assessment on how people in each of the countries surveyed rate their happiness. Its 2021 report covers 149 countries. Finland is the happiest country in the world in this latest report, and also in several of the previous years. In the 2021 report, nine of the top ten happiest countries are all in Europe. New Zealand, which ranks number nine, is the only country among the top ten that is not located in Europe. What makes people in these countries feel happy? The report bears its happiness ranking on three indicators: life evaluations, positive emotions, and negative emotions. For life evaluations. The data s come from survey by the Gallup World Poll, which asks respondents to evaluate their own current life. The survey b a s e d people's well-being on six factors, namely income, health, someone to count on, freedom, generosity, and trust. So, if one has a job and earns sufficient income, is healthy, has someone to count on, enjoys freedom, and trusts his society or his government. Then such person is likely to say he is happy. It can be seen from this survey that economic status and social security considerably contribute to a person's happiness. It shall be noted that the survey of the 2021 World Happiness Report was conducted in 2020, when the entire world was being devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, authors of the report said that. Though there were significant increases in average sadness and worry, which are regarded as negative emotions, they found that overall life evaluations and happiness rankings were surprisingly stable. The top countries before the pandemic remained the top countries in 2021. The authors of the report note that the top countries, such as Finland, Iceland. Denmark or Switzerland already had higher levels of trust and lower levels of inequality, both of which helped them to keep death rates low and social cohesion high, and hence to maintain their favorable positions. These small and mid-sized European nations are known to be welfare states, whereby the government collects high taxes and take good care of its citizens. From cradle to grave, their government and society are also seen as non-corruptible. The World Happiness Report is launched annually on the International Day of Happiness, which falls on the 20th of March. Its report of 2021 is only its ninth of such report. The authors, who are a group of independent experts acting in their personal capacities. Say the assessment is an exercise of subject well-being, meaning the survey is based on personal feelings or opinions in the survey, and this survey is carried out on a national level. But happiness can also be measured at individual level, and be seen from a scientific point of view. Our body reacts when we feel happy by releasing certain body chemicals. Dopamine, which makes us feel good, and serotonin, which reduces depression, are the two most commonly known to be associated with happiness. People with clinical depression are often found to have lower levels of serotonin. Dopamine and serotonin are neurotransmitters, which are chemical messenger cells that transmit signals between neurons or nerves and other bodily cells. Neurotransmitters are responsible for processes and feelings in almost every aspect of the body, from blood flow to digestion. Another neurotransmitter associated with joy is endorphin, which is our body's natural painkiller. 
People who exercise up to a certain intensity are known to feel high, as his body releases endorphin, which has a morphine-like effect. However, when we are happy, we react in different ways. Some laugh, but some could cry with tears. Scientists say there is nothing wrong that we react to happiness differently. We will understand more about happiness from a psychiatric point of view. Unlock the science editor and producer Sinfa t a n s a r a w u t talked to Dr. p a t h a n o n k w a n s a n i t a psychiatrist at s o m d e t j a p r a y a Institute of Psychiatry, under Department of Mental Health, Thailand's Ministry of Public Health. In psychiatric terms, how do we know when a person is happy? Actually, when people feel happy, we will express in the three ways. First. We had the emotion, which can notice from the facial expression, and the second, uh, our thought, we can notice when we talk or when we share uh, the ideas, and the last one from the behaviors that we act, like uh, we engage more with the society or connect to another human. So this is the key that we can uh, know when person have a happiness, but. Uh, our brain also drive the happiness by the very key circuit called reward system. This system or this circuit can uh, drive the human, not only the human, actually for the all animals to have a happy uh, in uh, their life, which is more complicated circuit in our brain and link to more uh, neurotransmitters. Hormonal and physical response. How do you advise people to practice being happy? You need to notice how you can feel happy for yourself first. So you need to practice by yourself to reach the goal that you need to fulfill your happiness level. But now we have the term of positive psychology. This is a one branch of psychology that. Focus on strength more than weakness. Focus on a uh, good life instead of repair the bad part of life. How do you advise people to have positive psychology? Yes, for example, if people come to see a psychiatrist that they have a depression and they feel the negative part of themselves, like they're not good enough. They're not unlovable for some their lovers, so instead of we need to fix that, why you not good enough? We can help them build that strength. That what the good part that they still have because most of depression will think that they have only the bad sides of themselves, but actually everyone had both sides, bad and good part. Can we actually trick our body to feel happy? For instance, can we fake a smile to make us feel happy? Actually, the most of people think that we can do something to make our body believe that we happy, but it's just only one part that I mentioned earlier. That three express up uh, ourselves to. The happiness first to the emotion expression, like a facial expression with smile, is can 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 uh, have a uh, evidence that we have the happy. But our our thoughts think about oh, we have more drive, more positive thoughts, more energy to uh, think about some future or about some problem in the positive way, and the. Three part, uh, sorry, and the third part about the behavior. So mm-hmm. fake smile is just focused on the behavior domain only. So you cannot just pretend to have a happiness by only fake smile. But your thoughts and your emotions still be the same. So it can have effect temporarily. But if you want to have your long term effect of the happiness. You need to uh, focus on the emotional part and thoughts part, 
as well to respond to the happiness. Okay. In, in psychiatric term, do you see the difference between happiness and pressures? Yes, actually it's a term very close, but it still be the different in the, the term of use when we want to communicate with the, with the people. Because happiness is more of the mind than the pleasure is focused more on the body. So I can give the example like a materialistic certification can serve pleasure needs. Like you get some things, you will have more pleasure, but not always happiness fulfillment because happiness is more deep level in, in the mind, state of mind, not only the body pleasure or the physical pleasure. In Thailand, what factor do you think are making people happy and unhappy now? Okay, it's a very interesting question because actually I think for the all countries, happiness is depend on micro, uh, 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 micro structure and macro structure, like a relationship, uh, friends, family is a very universal, but for the macro uh, factors like a COVID situation and good exit strategy for the control the situation, economic uh, crisis that relate or not relate to COVID situation and political situation, it play part to the happiness or uh, unhappiness. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. Now, we are going to look at happiness from another perspective, philosophy. Happiness is a major subject in philosophy, and it has a long history and many schools of thought. Unlock the Science is honored to have Professor Dr. Sourat Hongladarum from Department of Philosophy, Faculty of Arts. Jhulalongkorn University, a renowned philosopher, to discuss these issues of happiness. Professor Sorat is also an expert on ethics. Therefore, he tends to look at happiness with a tone of ethical consideration in his mind. But we need to provide our audience with some background of philosophical terms Professor Sorat will be using in his talk. He mentions Utilitarianism, a school of thought focusing on the results of an action. If the results of an action produce utility or happiness, then it is good. Hedonism is pleasure-seeking, and a hedonist is a person who seeks pleasure for himself. Professor Sola says, pleasure is unnecessary to happiness. Another term is stoicism. According to Professor Sorat, Stoicism tells us that there are things in our life that are beyond our control. So, if you want certain things that you cannot get, you will end up being unhappy or you will suffer. Therefore, Stoicism tells us not to allow things beyond our control to affect our thought or emotion. This could help us maintain our happiness. Now, you can enjoy Professor Sola's discussion on happiness philosophically with Unlock the Science editor and producer, Sinfa Tansarawut. Do you think we, the human, shall seek for happiness? Uh, I think it's the duty of human beings uh, to seek, not, not especially uh, one's own happiness, that's hedonism, that's another question. But I think it's uh, the duty of human beings to help get rid of suffering uh, in other human beings. And, and this is part of Buddhism. It, this is part of what it, uh, it, it is to, to be a Buddhist person also. But it, but it does not... Uh, cover only Buddhism because it's more universal, it's wider than that. You don't have to be a Buddhist in order uh, to, to have this sense of duty to help uh, relieve 
other people of suffering. So suffering is the opposite of happiness, right? Yes. Uh, uh, another way of saying this is that uh, people have a duty to promote happiness in other people. I think this is this is rather universal. And if you look at uh, other religious traditions such as Christianity, they they put a lot of emphasis on on this also. Uh, there is the tradition of uh, voluntary uh, action and charity and donation in Christianity and so on. Also in Islam and in, in, in I think in all other all all the religious traditions of the world. Is there any wrong with being a hedonist? The idea is that the best thing in life is one's own pleasure. Not exactly happiness, but but if you are a hedonist, then you tend to say or you tend to believe that happiness and pleasure is the same thing. But other people, other philosophers don't believe that. Uh, for example, a hedonist would say that uh, eating good food or uh, going to a fine restaurant, having a uh, good expensive wine and so on and so on represents happiness for them and and uh, there is nothing better in life than this kind of pleasure we are living in a world overwhelmed with various kind of troubles which could be very stressful to many of us philosophically how could we keep on being happy in your point of view? Uh, that is a very good question. And uh, we don't need to focus exclusively on Buddhism because otherwise this program will become like, you know, Buddhist philosophy. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we can also look at uh, what other traditions have to say, for example, in the West, there is the tradition known as Stoicism. Uh, but, but let us focus on Stoicism. There are some things in the world uh, pertaining to our lives that we cannot control. For example, people tend to get you know, unhappy when things around them do not go the way they want to, to be, right? Uh, in that case, they, they get upset or they, they, they get suffering. For example, uh, a student might get uh, upset when they learn that their grades are not what they expected. For example, they might expect an A in this course, but they get a C and they get mm -hmm. uh, really, like, you know, unhappy. Uh, according to Stoicism, there are certain things. Now, the basic principle is that there are some things, certain things that you cannot control. In fact, uh, you can control uh, to a certain extent the grades that you have, you have to study hard, you have to understand the material. But uh, there can be certain occasions where even if you have done all your homework, uh, even if uh, you have done all your studies, the results might not be the, uh, the ones that you expected. In that case, you have to understand that some things are not in your control and you don't try to let it affect your thoughts or, and your emotions. That is the basic principle of uh, stoicism. In reality, can we really avoid that? Can we really you know, practice the way that we, we would not allow the external factor to affect us internally? Can we really do that in, yes, in real yes, life? Yes. I, I believe so, yes, but it's difficult. It's difficult, but it does not hurt to try to uh, 
improve yourself a little by little. So uh, maybe you know uh, sometimes you lose your cool and you get very angry and you uh, open yourself fully, let everything uh, pour inside you. It's okay. It's perfectly okay because no one can become a stoic, a stoic sage. That is what they call. Uh, or in Buddhism, of course, uh, no one can attain nirvana. Nirvana, just just like that. You are an expert on ethical issues. Is there any consideration on the ethical aspect of happiness? Ethics and happiness are mm-hmm. very much related. Uh, we have discussed a little bit about utilitarianism, mm-hmm. right? That is yes. one way of mm-hmm. joining uh, happiness or what they call utilities into uh, ethical consideration. But I think uh, what we could also focus on is that uh, people should be ethical and by being an ethical person, one becomes in the end a happy person also. This is a very ancient tradition. Uh, You can find this both in the Indian tradition, I think in the Chinese tradition also, though I'm I'm not uh, familiar with that. So we are in Thailand. What do you think are the main factors that make Thai people happy and unhappy? I think it's the same as uh, people everywhere. So it, it is not true only for Thai people. People will be happy when their needs are satisfied, uh, when they are hungry and they can have something to eat. Not, not fancy stuff like you know, good restaurant. Not, no, we are not talking about the hedonists. We are talking about ordinary people. So people become happy. And, and when they have good friends, when, when uh, they live in a, a stable family, with you know, uh, a good home where people smile and, and laugh with one another. I think this is universal. This is true not only for Thai people. And when they don't have those, of course, they will be unhappy. The World Happiness Report said that a broad range of evidence showed that people who are emotionally happier who have more satisfying lives, and who live in happier communities are more likely both now and later to be healthy, productive, and socially connected. That can be interpreted as being happy could benefit your physical and mental health and also people around you and your community. Psychologically or philosophically, we are advised to stay happy. And happiness is not simply pressure. Happiness benefits you more holistically than pressure. Dr. Patan Nopsom Dejjabraya Institute of Psychiatry said when you are happy, your thought will show it through your verbal expression, your emotion will show it via facial expression, and your behavior will show it by your body language, such as by smiling. Dr. Patan also mentioned the practice of positive psychology which share similarity to Stoicism in the philosophy, that one should focus on his strength, not his weakness, and not allow factors beyond his control to affect him. So, you can make yourself happy. And don't forget that you can trick your body to be happy. Faking a smile is not only nothing wrong, but could benefit you mentally, though for a short while. So, don't forget to smile and stay happy. Unlocked aside, I would like to thank Dr. Patanon Kwansanit of Somdet Jabriya Institute of Psychiatry and Professor Dr. Saurat Hongladalom of Jualongkorn University. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jula Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page.
and our program is also available as podcast. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Simfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. 